This is the circumstance that led to my departure from the Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, it was actually a scripture, a scripture in Revelation chapter 12. And uh, it's in verse 17. I'll read the scripture. It says, And the dragon grew wrathful at the woman, and went off to wage war with the remaining ones of her seed, who observe the commandments of God, and have the work of bearing witness to Jesus. So, it becomes obvious that the Bible is written to the people who are in God's kingdom. It's really not written for the rest of the world or the nations, because God considers them to be a film of dust or a drop in the bucket. So if you uh, carefully consider that scripture, the remaining ones of the seed that Jesus Christ planted, planted what that suggests is that there will be a very few of the saints, the anointed chosen ones, who would be obeying Jesus Christ. And so the reverse is also true. There would be a large number of those saints who are inside God's kingdom who would be disobeying Jesus Christ. So I spent a lot of time looking for what commandment that might be. Jesus Christ made several commandments to his people in the Bible that are written in the Gospels. But one of the most fundamental of these is found in Matthew chapter 28, and it's right at the end of the chapter of Matthew. I'll read the commandment that Jesus Christ gave to his disciples, his followers. Here it is. It's in uh, verse 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of people of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things I have commanded you. And look, I am with you all the days until the conclusion of the system of things. And so it occurred to me that this is a commandment of all commandments. He's commanding his disciples to baptize people and keep his commandments. So this is one of the most fundamental of all the commandments. And uh, the baptism sequence is in the name of the Father, the Son, and with Holy Spirit. It's pretty simple. And it should be right up to the conclusion of the system of things. Jehovah's Witnesses, however, add another name to uh, uh, the set of names listed in Jesus Christ's commandment. And that name is God's Spirit Directed Organization. So it occurred to me that uh, here is a commandment that not only is it not being kept, it is being undermined. So the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses have blatantly changed this commandment. But even though it's blatant, uh, the people inside of Jehovah's Witnesses, God's kingdom, can't see it. And there's another scripture which shows that uh, people will, will be restrained from seeing the man of lawlessness. However, to continue on why I was uh, disfellowshipped or the reason for my departure, I uh, wrote a letter to the governing body, each member of the governing body, there were 10 at the time, and uh, also to everyone in my congregation where I could find an uh, address for that person. So there was about 50 letters that I wrote explaining the situation where Jesus Christ's commandment is not being kept and uh, why it was important for people to keep that commandment. Um, so, a week later, uh, I was asked to go to a, a, a meeting with three elders in the congregation. And uh, the meeting was actually at the Canadian Bethel headquarters. During this judicial committee hearing, the three elders tried very hard to find a reason to disfellowship me. I hope you can understand why it must be very, it must have been very difficult for them to uh, find a reason to disfellowship a person who is saying that we should obey Jesus Christ, uh, the King. And uh, so they tried many things like, uh, my letter is causing divisions, 
and that I'm not being loyal to uh, the governing body, the anointed saints who are looking after Jehovah's Witnesses. And anyway, I stuck to my guns and explained that, uh, no, I want to be loyal to Jesus Christ. It uh, didn't help. Uh, I was disfellowshipped. Uh, I was walked to the door the, the, uh, at the Kingdom Hall on the Canadian Bethel property. And uh, they uh, escorted me through the door. And the person, the elder who locked the door behind me, must have been very confounded when I started shouting and jumping for joy as I left the Canadian Bethel headquarters and uh, perhaps uh, I should have gone back and explained to him that I had just been persecuted for Jesus Christ's sake and uh, reminded him of the scripture uh, that explains what kind of rewards a person might get who uh, stood up for Jesus Christ. Uh, I, sh I should read that script scripture to you so you understand why I jumped and shouted for joy. So here's the scripture. It's in Matthew chapter 5. And uh, mainstream religions call these the Beatitudes. And they're, in, they're actually a part of Jesus Christ's Sermon on the Mount. And the scripture which applies to me is in uh, verse 11. I'll read it for you. It says here, Happy are you when people reproach you and persecute you and lyingly say every sort of wicked thing against you for my sake. That's Jesus Christ's sake. Rejoice and leap for joy. That's what I did. Since your reward is great in the heavens, for in that way they persecuted the prophets prior to you. So I hope you understand that when I was leaving the Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witnesses for uh, uh, what might, have been, might be the last time, uh, I felt joy at having endured a persecution uh, just because I stood up for a commandment that Jesus Christ made. So there's also other... Uh, Scriptures which explain that uh, uh, the remnant uh, who obey Jesus Christ will be excluded uh, from God's kingdom. Uh, a week after uh, I was disfellowshipped, the uh, elders at the Kingdom Hall are now duty-bound to make an announcement using my own name uh, from the podium or the pulpit at the uh, Kingdom Hall. And uh, what they are uh, duty-bound to announce is that I am no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. So they actually use God's name to exclude me from God's kingdom. And uh, there are some scriptures which are in the Bible which show that this is prophetic. That this will actually happen to the... Uh, sons of the kingdom who are loyal to Jesus Christ. So I'm going to read those scriptures to you in case you're not convinced. So here's the scriptures. Actually, Romans uh, chapter 9, and it starts in verse 25. And it says there, It is as he says also in Hosea, Those not my people, I will call my people. And her who was not my beloved, beloved. And in the place... Kingdom Hall. And in the place where it was said to them, You are not my people, there they will be called sons of the living God. And so, perhaps it's not the last time that I'll be in that Kingdom Hall. There's another scripture which uh, talks to uh, God's people who are keeping His commandment or trembling at His word. And uh, it explains that the, the people who are really uh, uh, intent on keeping God's commandment, His word, will be hated and excluded. And this is a end-time prophecy. Uh, almost every religion considers uh, the book of Isaiah, uh, especially the last few chapters, to be uh, relevant for end times. And so it's in Isaiah chapter 66, and I'll read... Uh, verse 5, here it says, Hear the word of Jehovah, you men who are trembling at his word. The men who want to keep his commandment. 
your brothers that are hating you, that are excluding you by reason of my name, Jehovah, said, may Jehovah be glorified. He must also appear with rejoicing on your part. And they are the ones that will be put to shame. So I hope you understand that this scripture in Isaiah 66 can only be fulfilled by Jehovah's Witnesses. It's only Jehovah's Witnesses who are using God's name and doing it uh, all around the world. And it's only Jehovah's Witnesses who exclude people from their congregations through the use of God's name, Jehovah. Uh, they are actually officially disfellowshipped by saying uh, an announcement which says you are no longer one of Jehovah's, God's name, Jehovah's Witnesses. So um, that's profound. Uh, think about it. So the label XJW or X Jehovah's Witnesses is uh, not something to be ashamed of. In fact, uh, there are X JWs who I am familiar with who are happy to be X JWs because they understand the same as I do that they are more a part of God's actual kingdom than the, the Jehovah's Witnesses who are still uh, considered Jehovah's Witnesses by the governing body in the Washington Bible and Tract Society. So, yeah, um, being an XJW uh, solidifies uh, my belief in the Bible and convinces me that the Bible is absolutely, perfectly accurate. Everything is happening exactly according to the way it was written down thousands of years ago in the Bible. So, I'm happy I'm an XJW. And I eventually believe that uh, uh, a time will come where I will be rewarded for the persecutions that I've endured. And I'm looking forward to that time.